Hello everyone, welcome back to the Byte Vigor channel. Today, we're going to explore the state design pattern, a widely used behavioral design pattern in software development. The core idea of this pattern is to change the behavior of an object based on its state, allowing the object's behavior to evolve as its state changes. Imagine you're using an automatic coffee machine. This coffee machine handles your requests differently based on its current state. Initially, the machine is in an idle state, waiting for you to select a coffee type. Once you make a selection, it switches to a preparing state and starts making the coffee. After the coffee is ready, it moves to a completed state, waiting for you to collect your coffee. In each state, the coffee machine behaves differently. The state pattern is like this coffee machine, managing an object's different states to change its behavior accordingly. According to Wikipedia, the state pattern is a behavioral design pattern that implements a state machine in an object-oriented way. With the state pattern, each state is implemented as a derived class of a state interface, and state transitions are handled by invoking methods defined by the interface. The state pattern can be seen as a variant of the strategy pattern, where the current strategy changes based on state transitions. To better understand this pattern, let's use an automatic coffee machine as an example and implement the state pattern in Java. In this example, the coffee machine's behavior changes based on its current state, which includes idle, selecting coffee, and dispensing coffee. Note that this is a simplified example, and an actual coffee machine would have more complex states. First, we define a coffee machine state interface, which contains the various operations that the coffee machine can perform. These operations include inserting a coin, selecting coffee, and dispensing coffee. Through this interface, we define all possible actions for the coffee machine, but the specific behavior will be determined by different state classes implementing this interface. Next, we create concrete implementation classes for each state of the coffee machine. These include the idle state, selecting coffee state, and dispensing coffee state. Each state class implements the coffee machine state interface and defines the behavior of each operation according to the specific state. In the idle state, if the user inserts a coin, the system prompts, coin inserted, please select your coffee, and switches the coffee machine state to selecting state. If the user tries to select coffee or dispense coffee, the system prompts the user to insert a coin first. In the selecting state, if the user inserts a coin, the system prompts that the coin has already been inserted and not to insert it again. If the user selects a coffee, the system starts making the coffee and switches the state to dispensing state. If the user tries to dispense coffee, the system prompts the user to select a coffee first. In the dispensing state, if the user inserts a coin or selects coffee, the system prompts that the coffee is being made and not to repeat these actions. If the user chooses to dispense the coffee and the coffee is ready, the system prompts the user to collect the coffee and switches the state back to idle state, ready for the next operation. Next, we define the coffee machine class, which manages the different states of the coffee machine and executes the appropriate actions based on the current state. The coffee machine class maintains different state objects internally and tracks the current state through the current state variable. Each time the insert coin, select coffee, or dispense coffee methods are called, the system performs the corresponding action based on the current state and switches to the next state if needed. The state transitions are handled by the set state method. Finally, in the client code, we create a coffee machine object and sequentially execute the actions of inserting a coin, selecting coffee, and dispensing coffee. In this example, when we call the insert coin method, the coffee machine transitions from idle state to selecting state and prompts the user to select coffee. When we call the select coffee method, the coffee machine enters the dispensing state and starts making coffee. Finally, when we call the dispense coffee method, the coffee machine informs that the coffee is ready and switches back to idle state, prepared for the next use. So, when should you consider using the state design pattern? If an object's behavior depends on its state, and needs to change dynamically at runtime based on state transitions, you should consider using the state pattern. This pattern is particularly useful in systems with complex state transition logic, 
such as automatic coffee machines, vending machines, or order status management. By using the state pattern, you can separate state and behavior logic, making your code more organized, maintainable, and extensible. To summarize, the state design pattern separates state and behavior, allowing objects to dynamically adjust their behavior based on their state. This pattern improves system flexibility and maintainability, enabling easy management and extension of an object's state logic. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please like it and subscribe to the Byte Vigor channel and make sure you don't miss our upcoming content. See you in the next video.